Lakeview site is a large 10 hectare site sitting directly above Queenstown Bay. Um, it looks out over the town centre, the lake beyond and across to the remarkable mountain range. The history of the site goes back to the 1860s with uh, the establishment of the Queenstown settlement. Initially the land was used for an agricultural lease, um, but it wasn't until sort of post-war tourism really kicked off in the district and that's when you saw the construction of uh, Kiwi cribs and campground assets on the site. A key priority for the Queenstown Lakes District Council is to enhance the quality of our built and, and natural environment. The Lakeview site offers a great opportunity to intensify the land use, providing a variety of housing options within an existing urban boundary. One of the key benefits of this development will be the connectedness with the downtown, ensuring that it's walkable and less reliance on the vehicle. The council has entered into a development agreement with a private sector partner. They have really taken on board the council's objectives for the site. They bring a lot of innovation, including um, a commitment to 100% carbon neutral development. APL property has been associated with the Lakeview site for a number of years, initially through the management of the site, but then also through the demolition and relocation process uh, as part of the uh, larger development project. The first stage of the Lakeview project is the deconstruction of buildings and the relocation to other sites. So far, 3,500 tonnes of demolition waste has been created as part of the project. Of this, a large amount of the waste has been diverted from landfill, which is a really good accomplishment. We're also lifting and relocating 22 buildings, uh, one of which is a double-storey 10-unit accommodation block. The Lakeview demolition tender was issued with clear direction from the Queenstown Lakes District Council that waste minimisation efforts were to be front and centre as part of the process. The tender review process focused on the waste minimisation strategies that the various contractors put into the tender. This included reviewing the previous examples that they had and their successes on those examples. In addition, the industry recognised rubbery standards are being used for reporting purposes on the project. Current stats tell us that 30% of all waste to Victoria landfill comes from construction and demolition waste via our transfer station. So on this project, by uh, working to the objectives of the waste minimisation plan, uh, we've been able to reuse the materials from the site and avoid a lot of that material going to the landfill. QRDC is committed to transitioning to a circular economy where waste minimisation is considered as part of all of our operations and projects. Royal Bush has traditionally been known as a, a transport based company. Um, there's a lot of other aspects to the company that are less well known. Demolition is a big part of that. As the main contractor for the deconstruction portion of the Lakeview project, Royal Bush is responsible for several subcontractors. We oversee the asbestos removal, demolition and deconstruction of buildings, removal of services and removal of contaminated materials. Here at Royal Bush we understand the importance of deconstructing buildings in a way that the materials can be reused. Historically a common practice of demolition was to send all materials to landfill, the majority of which still has some value and can be reused. Not only are we focused on minimising waste to landfill, we're also focused on minimising our overall environmental footprint. Two examples of this are the use of our high capacity trucks and our hybrid excavator, both of which are minimising the amount of fuel used on the Lakeview project. Royal Bush's goal on this project is to divert as much waste as possible from landfill. Currently sitting on 86% diversion rate, we are confident that these figures will go up. With a large number of buildings already deconstructed and repurposed on site, these two buildings behind me are the next up on the list. Out of this building here, timber repurposed, concrete repurposed, all those windows will be repurposed. 
pavers repurposed, any steel was recycled, pink bats, timbers, clean timbers will be recycled, repurposed. This building paper is one of the few materials that will be going to landfill. Already on this project, we've donated a lot of materials, ranging from toilets through to roofing iron, even flax bushes like this. We're also relocating this whole motel block, which is a great outcome for the project. Integrating waste mineralisation into a project like this also brings with it environmental, community and financial benefits. Country Lane is what we're calling the area here. It's the family farm, has been in the family for about four generations. The Lakeview cabins were the perfect fit for growing Country Lane. We've got five of them here. They're just the ideal size for artisan boutique style retail spaces, which is what we're hoping to achieve here at Country Lane. There's something truly satisfying about finding and rescuing old materials and giving them a second life. I love it when there's a story to tell. And the added bonus is these cabins won't end up in landfill. As guardians of paradise, QLDC is in a unique position of influence. We're proud to be uh, demonstrating a commitment to the objectives outlined in our waste minimisation and management plan. Reusing and recovering materials is a key part of a circular economy. This is critical to reducing the emissions that come from waste disposal and from the production and consumption of new materials. We also need to inspire our communities to develop circular strategies for waste. So that way, together, we can achieve our goal of becoming a zero waste, climate resilient, sustainable district.